question of the ages, right? Can your iPad replace your MacBook? Can it replace a laptop in general? Is it enough? On and on it goes. Can you buy an iPad instead of a laptop? Whatever. But before we get into the video, let me know what you think in the comments. For this comparison, we'll be referencing the 12.9 inch iPad Pro because that is the one that I use. Instead of looking at it as, do I have, I have to choose between one or the other. I would say it depends on your niche. Like certain things require a MacBook because the iPad Pro can't do it yet. Like check out this clip from my interview with Fernando Silva. That, but would you ever ditch your desktop computer or Mac or anything for your iPad Pro as your main device to do all of your computer work? And then why or why not? Uh, today I would not. It, like literally today I wouldn't. The only way I, would, I need secondary monitor support. I need to be able to, or like a real secondary monitor support, or like real multi, like a pro level multitasking. Because mm -hmm. I have, you know, I, for my nine to five job, I work for a marketing analytics company, and I'm building a ton of PowerPoints, running through a lot of Excel and G file or numbers files, whatever they're called, Google, whatever it is, the Google version of Excel. Yeah. And I have a lot of so like I'll have like six or seven PowerPoints open at the same time, where I'm copying data from one of them, moving into the other, and vice versa. So, but it just has to do with, I need to be able to do more at one time. This is, like if the day that I can plop my iPad into a USB-C or Thunderbolt hub, populates my main 32 inch screen, that'll be the day I don't need a MacBook Air. See, he wants to use his iPad Pro for everything, but he cannot for the certain task that he needs to do for work. And unfortunately, iPad OS just doesn't have that feature yet. So it depends. Just know there will be things that you can and can't do on both devices. So it depends on what you need and want it for. I think with the iPad Pro, Apple isn't trying to create a replacement for their MacBooks, but instead they are creating a second option for people to choose from. The iPad Pro, in my opinion, is the coolest two-in-one ever, but it comes at a price, literally. The iPad Pro is beautifully designed. It is a flat sheet of glass and aluminum with some high-tech cool stuff inside. With the A12 Bionic or whatever was used in the 2018 models to the M1 models that they have for 2021. The processors in these things kick butt and are probably the fastest on the market. The 120 hertz display is just beautiful. And the addition of Magic Keyboard and Apple Pencil take this thing to a whole new freaking level. Unfortunately, that's where the comes out of price part comes into play. Like a MacBook, the iPad costs, depending on what size and model, anywhere from $750 to $1200 or even $2000. But unlike the MacBook, the iPad does not come with a built-in trackpad and keyboard, hence the Magic Keyboard, which is $300 to $350 brand new from Apple. Then, to complete this two-in-one setup, you get the Apple Pencil, which is another 130 from Apple, and you've got yourself a great product for a good couple hundred dollars more than you would for a MacBook. But it can also do a lot more than a MacBook, but also less at the same time. Like I said, I don't think Apple is shooting for this thing to be a complete Mac replacement, or to even compete in the same market, but for it to be a second option alongside the Mac. With this new setup that we have, that we just went over, you now have a two-in-one device. A tablet that can transform into a laptop. In tablet mode, you can take the iPad off of the Magic Keyboard, and along with the Apple Pencil, you now have your canvas, your drawing book, your school notepad, your eBooks, your large screen, but yet portable entertainment units, your hub for Clash of Clans, and much, much more, all in one device. But when you put the iPad back on the keyboard, it's kind of like Crocs. <laughs> you got the chill mode, and then you put the strap down, and that's when you're in sports mode. When you dock the iPad to the Magic Keyboard, you're now in sports mode. You have the device for photo editing, for video editing, email writing, essay writing, internet browsing, communications, and again, so much, much, much more all in this one slim and sleek but kind of heavy package it's awesome so that that is what the ipad has over the mac it is the ultimate two-in-one it's hannah montana's dream it's the best of both worlds but 
if you are fully into one side or the other, you don't want a two-in-one. You maybe just need a computing workhorse. Yes, even though the iPad can and maybe might be able to do a lot of the things that you want, but it can't do all of the things that you need it to. There's a good chance that it won't do all the things that you need it to. At least, not yet. Give her a few more years of software updates, and we'll see. But for now, that's when you need a Mac, or its portable little bro, the MacBook. Pro, or Air, or whatever, this is not a two-in-one. You can't undock it from the keyboard. Well, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it, and it would probably void your warranty. You see, this is a croc with a permanent strap around the back, so it's like a, a sandal. It's permanently in sports mode. This device has devoted its life to computing. Do you need to have like 30,000 windows open at once? Well, this is for you. Do you need certain pro applications that the iPad just can't do yet? Once more, this is your best bet. Are you just made up out of files and need a file manager more complex and intuitive than the Files app on iPad? Then Finder and Mac OS is probably a great option for you. You're in an office all day. You need certain software that are just higher powered, multiple displays on at once, then that's when the Mac is your go-to guy. But after all of that, if that breakdown of what the iPad Pro does and doesn't do versus the Mac, if that still doesn't help and help you choose the winner of this epic battle, iPad versus Mac, then maybe this will help. Are you a casual worker, like a student? and having a tablet is really appealing, but you can't afford a laptop and a tablet because you need the laptop for those working hours. Maybe the iPad is the best choice for you. It can run all the Microsoft Office apps that you'll need for school. And Fernando Silva has a few great videos on that already. It has the added features of 120 hertz, which just makes everything look beautiful and buttery smooth, never a boring moment. It's nice, it's compact, very simple and similar to your phone. But if you are the type of person who works non-stop, you're constantly doing this or doing that, you're in an office all day long, you need certain softwares that are high powered. And again, you need multiple displays going at once, but you still want the portability for meetings, but the power of a racehorse, then the MacBook is yours. Hopefully this helped you choose between the iPad and the MacBook. I'm tired of people saying that the iPad needs Mac OS, that it needs to take over the Mac line. And that's the boat I used to be in too. But I've realized that the iPad isn't competing against the Mac. It's just providing another option for those who don't need everything that the Mac provides, but want a little bit of versatility in their lives that the iPad can give. I hope that makes sense. I hope this helped someone. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and check me out on my socials. All linked down below. Check out Fernando Silva and his channel. Again, link below. Like, subscribe, check out my other channel where I make covers with a friend and original songs coming soon. Until then, I'm Jake. That's just shout out on my phone.